I selected as my game of the day for round two of the Tromso Olympiad the game between Alexei Shirov and Sarunas Sulskis in the Latvia Lithuania, ma Lithuania match. Uh, for me, this was an easy choice actually. This was a classic Shirov. Alexei Shirov, of course, renowned for his wild attacking games. And, well, perhaps he hasn't been in as quite as good a form as we've seen him maybe 10 years ago. But still, as we see today, he can produce the most remarkable games. So, here we go. Shirov with the white pieces. So, as I said, this was from the Latvia-Lithuania match. So, uh, well, there's friendly rivalry between these two Baltic nations. And Shirov has played bishop c4 and now plays knight g5. Uh, of course, the, the modern way to play these kind of positions is to go d3 and often play very quietly with c3. And it can almost look like Spanish positions, actually. But Shirov plays in the old romantic way, um, the so-called, well, fried liver attack. <laughs> this, this is sometimes known as. So there's an attack on f7. It's absolutely crude. And there's one main move here, which is d5. You can also play bishop c5, that's quite interesting. But d5 is the main move. And the main line here is now knight a5. This is a very, very old variation. And check. And black generally sacrifices a pawn. And now white has a choice of bringing the bishop back to d3 or bishop back to e2. These are both very old continuations, but black has compensation for the pawn. But instead, Sulskis played knight takes d5. Now, this is well known in theory. It's a very old move. Uh, I've got, well, we'll see in a moment, I've got games here going back to 1610, for example, uh, played by Greco and Palerio. Uh, and, well, it's well known that knight takes f7 presents black with great difficulties. Let's see how the game went. This is what Shirov played. To play this against Shirov is brave. Shirov would have no hesitation about sacrificing this piece, although he said after the game that, of course, in this computer era, he was kind of, well, he was rather anxious, actually, and he went back and checked through lots of his old variations in his head, um, trying to remember old analysis. As he said, he probably had this lost on the board when he was seven or eight years old. So here's the first big cross point, crossroads in the game. So black hat hang on to the piece on d5 with the king. And of course now there's a pin. So black has a choice. Do you defend this knight with knight on d5 with knight e7? Or do you go to b4 as in the game? Knight e7, uh, the, that's the most popular move here. And then d4 is a good move. And, well, I've got games here by Greco, for example. Um, and here, bishop g5. This is a game I'm following between Cochrane and Maheshandra from Calcutta, 1856. It went like this. Um, and here, rook f4, probably not the best move. And in this position, white gave checkmate. That was Cochrane against Mahachandra, Kolkata, 1856, or Calcutta, 1856. So, okay, knight e7 is a very old move. But instead, knight b4 played. And looking at the theory now, well, this isn't so clear, actually. Uh, maybe we'll see more of this variation in future when, you know, you check these lines with computers and they come up with incredible defensive moves. Could well be that castles is the best move for white here. But Shirov played a3, and this might have been a stroke of genius. According to the computers, this is not the best move, but it must have thrown Sulskis out of his preparation. 
he went in, of course you have to, and took the rook in the corner. And Shirov took with the knight. Now, look, the, the king is in the line of fire of the bishop on c4, so quite understandably, black played his king over to d6. According to the computers, queen h4 is the best move, hitting the bishop on c4, and that seems to gain some kind of uh, important move for black. So after d3, then king d6, and according to the computer, black should be okay here. Um, there are alternatives, of course, in this position, white can go in for this wild variation, and then we have a situation where uh, we have two knights in the corner, uh, corner in the corners of the board, extraordinary, but black should be okay here, apparently. Anyway, Sulsk has played king d6, and now d4. By the way, Shirov had said that he'd found all this ages before, even before he played knight takes f7, he'd gone through and checked all these variations. And bishop e6. Now I think Shirov's next move is fantastic. He's a rook down, and he just played his rook into e1. By the way, if pawn takes e5 check, then king c6 is a very cool move. It looks extraordinary to step into the line of the queen here, but of course there is a horrible pin, and black will win the knight on d5. Instead, Shirov played rook e1. It's a brilliant move. As I said, he'd foreseen this ages before. It's really strong. For example, if pawn takes d4, then white plunges in. And now black's king gets caught in the middle. I mean, this is absolutely brilliant. And no defense. That's mate. Or let's say c6, and again, rook takes. This is fantastic. And white sacrifices again. And, well, if the king had gone to e7, then bishop g5 would have been the end. And this is also the end. Black's king gets caught in the crossfire with these bishops. And, well, the queen is lost and the king is getting cut to shreds as well. Uh, b5 from Sulskis. Well, this is a really tricky move. If, for example, the bishop, well, if it takes on b5, then d5 is on priest. If the bishop drops back, then queen d7 is a clever move. With the simple idea of if rook takes e5, bishop g5, <laughs> bishop g4 wins the queen. And once again, if pawn takes e5, then king c6, and this terrible pin actually saves the day for black, or more than saves the day, actually. So b5, a really tricky move, but there is a good answer. Knight b4, absolutely brilliant from Shirov. I mean, he's so typical of, of many of his games that, you know, there's all these pieces uh, firing against each other. Um, so many pieces on prees. He's already a rook down, and now he leaves his bishop on prees. But this is completely sound. He'd calculated this all out absolutely brilliantly. So, for example, if bishop takes bishop, then a check. This is the point of knight b4, of course, to check on c6. And now bishop g5, and the queen is lost, and white should be winning that one. So, pawn takes bishop anyway. Check. And bishop g5, so... Once again, white wins the queen, and queen takes c7. If bishop e7 to block the check, then knight c6 looks very good for white. So rook d7. And rook d6. Yeah, Shirov said he'd... well not exactly overlooked this, but underestimated this move. Um, and there's still a bit of work for white to do here. So if we take a body count, we see that black has rook and two bishops against the queen. 
So it's still not absolutely clear, this position. So if the rook on h8 actually manages to enter the game, then white will be in trouble. So Shurov has to play very energetically here. So first of all, d5 pushes the bishop back. Queen check, excellent move, because now um, the king is, is just put in the corner and queen c4. Of course, the problem is that this knight is in desperate trouble, and if white manages to pick that one up, then there should be no problems. Well, here's a tricky little variation. Bishop a4, typical of the kind of tactics that Shirov sees. And here, at first, he thought that black might be okay. The threat is to play bishop b5, and when this is taken, then knight d4, check, and take the queen. But then he realized that knight d3 is an excellent move. So stopping tricks on the diagonal towards the king, and also threatening queen takes bishop, and, well, white is going to win material. So black is actually lost here. Uh, he tried a5, but and in that way tried to bring the knight out, but, but it's gone, it's completely gone. Um, if bishop c6, then rook e5 holds that important pawn and white is winning. So black tried to get the king out, but now, well, it's actually terribly simple. Rook e6 is a great move, uh, really keeping hold of that pawn. If that's taken, then of course white uh, wins material here with a check and picking up the bishop well there are also ways to continue the attack but that's the simplest so black tried g6 and now rook takes g6 is a very very sweet winning move I mean this is typical Shirov that you know even finishing off the game at the end you know he's sacrificing another piece it's absolutely brilliant I mean this is like a game out of the 19th century, it's just beautiful. So, actually, black resigned here. Let's see what happens if the rook is taken. So, queen e6 check. If the, if the king goes back, then white wins actually quite prosaically, because if, for instance, here, then actually the d pawn is just going to go through, um, supported by the queen. But let's see what happens if the king comes up the board. In fact, it's forced checkmate here. And now, queen e2. I like the geometry of that checkmate, it's very nice. Shirov on brilliant form there. I mean, it harks back to his the, the good old days for him. He actually said at the moment, I asked him, you know, how much chess are you playing? He said, well, not a huge amount of classical chess, because he doesn't like playing open tournaments, and he's finding it difficult to get invitations to top tournaments. So he's playing a lot of rapid chess at the moment. Well, it's a pity if he doesn't get those invitations to the top tournaments, because he's still, as we've seen, a brilliant player. So much chess going on every day, of course, here, and it's hard to select uh, one game, um, but it's also hard to sort of give the whole story of the round actually but one result does stand out and that's uh, the Norwegian second team managed to draw with Ukraine of course uh, Ukraine one of the, the big challengers here um, often in, been in contention over the last decade but Ukraine drew with Nor the Norwegian second team after Vasily Ivanchuk lost on board one to Froda Urkadal. Uh, Russia beat Qatar three and a half half and Armenia defeated Australia 3-1. So the big, m most of the big teams came through apart from the Ukraine.